welcome back to another episode of Stay in Control. We still have Dr. Michael. Hi. Hello. Can you please summarize for us what we discussed in the previous episode? Uh, what we have discussed in the past is that very few important points that drug addiction starts very early for parents to understand that my kid or my child is not young and I don't have to worry about he's still a little kid. No. And we averaged the drug addiction will start in between age 9 to 11 years old. And we also stressed out that the consequences of addiction is very grave, very difficult to deal with. For example, we said something about the, the psychological consequences, the economic consequences, and the social. social consequences, and the legal consequences. And we summarized last time that the psycho, psychological, psychological effect of the drug addiction could be anxiety, depression, uh, could be withdrawn, could be hallucinations, could be delusions. And these could last after we stop the drug or continue on. Also, the economic, that people that are, can get high, they will never be able to work. They lose a lot of their potential income. And we said it's about $500,000 per lifetime. Also, we, uh, also we explained that the drug addiction will be causing social. That means my role as a father, role as a mother, role as a sister would not be filled by me because it's very difficult while I'm, in, I'm high, I can take care of these people that I'm supposed to take care of. And also the legal, I can go to prison. And a lot of our patients that I deal with, one of the questions I ask, what are the legal consequences of your addiction? And most of the time they have been in prison, they have been arrested, and sometimes they cause psychological or physical harm to themselves. For example, getting in fights in bars after they got drunk, they can, they can get hurt physically. And they can to, cause damage. And they can cause damage, definitely. So continuing our discussion from last time, I would like to ask you, how does the addiction start? What are the steps, the first steps to get into addiction? We discussed the last time how addiction starts. And again, if I am not at rest with my soul, I will start looking for something to help me out. For example, if I can't sleep, okay, I'm going to start looking for drugs or something to let me go to sleep. I, example a lot, we use a lot of that, is that alcohol. If I'm anxious, can't sleep, I'll take a drink. What happened? What about that? It would definitely put me to sleep. So you would say that socially, socially using drugs could lead into addiction. Of course, this is how it starts. It does not start, people do not see is a drug addiction first, and they're not worried about it. What happened, I just was, today I couldn't sleep, so I'll take a, a drink of alcohol. That definitely will put me to sleep. Then tomorrow, well, I'm worried not to sleep, so I'll take a drink. So it started something from a symptom that I could not sleep, so I take a drink. Into a habit. Then it starts becoming a habit, and day, and day, and day, and day. There's something also very important that happens with drug addiction, is the something called tolerance. What's tolerance? Tolerance, psych, uh, uh, pharmacological 
tolerance is that I need to increase the dose of any compound to get the same effect. Yeah, For example, that. today I take a drink and I go to sleep. After a while, if I take a drink, I'm not going to go to sleep. So I take two drinks or I make my drink a little bit bigger. That's when tolerance happens. And then people start to react to tolerance little by little, starting from a little thing and becomes a huge dose. For example, I've had people that takes two grams of heroin a day, okay? That did not start at the two grams. It was start to have it's just a little tiny. It made effect. So after a few little tiny ones, I have to make it a little bit bigger. Also, in addition to alcohol, we can also I have seen cases with heroin. When they take two grams of heroin, they don't start at two grams because otherwise it will kill them. But it starts a little bit, then it goes on, then on, then on to get the same effect. That's what tolerance is. And that's the danger of tolerance. And I'll tell you, in my experience, I never used opiates and I don't use opiates, don't use any drugs. But I recently had surgery, which I had to stay in the hospital overnight. So after the surgery at night, the nurse came in and he said, this is two tablets of Percocets, 10 milligram. Take it because of your pain after surgery. I took that and I slept like a baby. No pain, nothing. I felt so good. So the nurse woke me up at six o'clock in the morning. He said, here's another two pills for you for the pain for surgery. I tell you the truth, I took them and I got about 50% of the effect. I didn't get anything else. By the third dose, I took it and I didn't feel anything. Then I said, why am I taking this? I stopped because it was not affecting me anymore. See how the tolerance is? Yeah, yeah. So what are the signs that you're dealing with an addict or that there is, that a family member or a friend are actually an addict? How would I know? The addicts, depending on what substance or what drug they are using, there is two sets of drugs or three sets of drugs of the classification. One is upper which is like methamphetamine, meth, or cocaine. It's upper. It makes you high, makes you up, it makes you anxious. In that case, but the... Are you your senses? Yes, it also, the drug addict, depending, depending on where the, he took his dose. Taking his dose, for example, if he took the dose for example, four or five hours earlier, he'll be so sleepy. But if he just took it, he'll be very anxious, very hyper, shaken, tremulous, actions like crazy, talking too fast, pupils are very wide, and sometimes it does not make sense because if he got into psychosis. Now, after the sleepiness, he'll become normal again until he takes another thing of the drug. So for people that are taking uppers, like meth and cocaine, you see changes in the mood as you see it. As you go on, if you're sitting with him or her, or your, your brother or your friend, you will see that becomes very anxious, moody, then can't sit stead, 
he's been moving all the time. Then he starts slowing down. And when he slows down, he goes to a crash, what we call a crash. And a crash, he will sleep. So he will let you go. I don't want to see you anymore. Or I don't want to talk to anybody. And he goes to bed. And he sleeps for four to five hours. It, it doesn't matter what time of the day. So you will see changes in the mood. Now, what about downers or alcohol? Okay, you will see that they are, for alcoholic, they have two things when they drink. Either become very belligerent, okay, and start fights in the bars, or becomes very happy, very talkative and happy. Sometimes we know that this guy is on something, okay? Then he goes to sleep again. So he becomes normal, he becomes funny or belligerent, and then he goes to sleep and he wakes up in the morning having a headache. Uh, there is a withdrawal headache, withdrawal symptoms. He starts feeling sweaty, he starts feeling dizzy, he felt feeling headaches. Those are the consequences of when he takes drugs at night, then he wakes up with these symptoms. So the, the final thing is that you cannot live with an addict. The addicts are like we are from the earth and they are from Mars. They have their own priorities. They have their own thinking. For example, he's not going to be worried about work. He's going to be worried when it's going to be the next fix. And it's going to start acting that way. Well, that makes me want to ask, how do I deal with an addict? Like, if a friend of mine or a family member is an addict, what do I do? Like, I don't want to let them go. I don't want to... Uh, neglect them. I, I want to take care of them. I want to see them get better. So how do I help? Can I ask you, Vicky, another question? Yeah, of course. If I have pneumonia, would I go to my friend or go to the doctor? Doctor? Of course. Okay. People feel that drug addiction can be dealt. I can help them. No, you're sorry. You cannot. You cannot deal with him. You have to refer him out to a specialist in drug addiction so we, he can treat him. I have a uh, last thing. I had a parent, a father, came to me bringing his son. And he said, doctor, I've been on him like a hawk. This guy cannot be using anything for the last two or three days. I looked at the kid, and the kid was high. And he said, no, I'm, you know, I said, your kid is high. So I asked him in front of his dad, when was the last fix you had? It was two hours ago in the bathroom. So here is the parent trying to control his child so he would not use what the child used. So this is how difficult that disease is. In the next episode, we'll talk about a little more about how to deal with him. He's very, very difficult, disruptive person. Well, thank you, Dr. Michael. That was very informative and useful. Uh, in the next episode, we were talking about the different types of addiction and different drugs and how they affect your body and brain. So thank you for watching.